So um, the reason why I wanted to keep it so simple is because it, what I want you to learn is to use, use Messenger as a, as a way of getting information from people. Um, that's, and it's, it just converts better than web forms. It's way more engaging. And unlike web forms, you now have a platform called ManyChat where you can re-engage and remarket these people based on the answers that they give you. Try doing that with any web form like software, <laughs> you know? Okay, so can, can you guys see my screen? You should see it like Zapier and you should see a bunch of zaps. Are we good? Yes, yes. Okay, I'm gonna turn the ones off that we're not gonna demo right now. And then I will show you those later. So GoToWebinar is kind of a popular one. Um, it's been around for a while. It's by a company called Citrix. I'm sure some of you have used it. So let's go and see how we set it up because this is kind of the meat and potatoes of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask somebody in Messenger what their best email is, okay? The, the, just for the sake of this test. Um, and when they submit that email to me, I'm going to update their contact record in ManyChat and then send a zap to go to a webinar that says this person signed up for a webinar. And what's going to happen when they sign up for that webinar automatically is they should get an email from GoToWebinar saying, hey, you just registered for this, for this thing. So mm -hmm. if this is a successful test, whoever tests this with me live right now is actually going to get an email from GoToWebinar because you will have registered for a dummy webinar in like 2027 that I set up in GoToWebinar. <laughs> okay. So here's the, th the first thing you need to do. You need to jump in and um, you, need to cr you need to make sure that you you're connected to ManyChat. So... Uh, the first thing you need to do is set up the trigger. What we're using for this test is an updated custom field, okay? The key to using Zapier to get data from ManyChat to other tools is custom fields, all right? Mm -hmm. So before we even go forward with building this out, I wanna show you where to do that. In ManyChat, you need to go to settings and custom fields to start collecting custom data on people. Mm -hmm. It's really, really simple. To do this, I'm going to move my, uh, this Zoom thing just takes up so much screen real estate. Okay. All you have to do is create a new custom field and you say, I don't know, favorite pet. And then there's several different types of inputs that you can accept. And these are, these are your customers' favorite pets. Okay. Create. You can create any arbitrary custom field. I mean, you can pretty much have a data point for anything that you could imagine here. Um, I've set up a few here already. Your email. Um, for elite, yeah, exactly. Like email is pretty important. So I think the first thing you should do is probably set up a custom field to collect people's email addresses. Um, <laughs> for a lead, lead qualification for a consulting business like the one I ran uh, was, I really want to know, first of all, the name of your company so I can do a little bit of research on how, what stage you're at. And then if you're a decision maker. So through, through various questions, I can figure out if you're the person I need to be talking to. If I'm selling into the enterprise, that decision maker could be one of nine people. If I'm selling to a startup, that decision maker is usually the CEO or the product lead. So that person is somebody I want to talk to. And I'll show you something really cool later. If, if, that, if that custom field were to get updated, I can get a notification in Slack right away if somebody fills out some information so I can get back to them immediately. Okay. Now, not get ahead of ourselves. First, you need to set up a custom field because otherwise you're not going to really be able to do anything with this. So that being said, let's go and make sure that we are creating a trigger in Zapier to update a custom field when somebody triggers that. And that's what's going to trigger the entire Zap cycle. So we're going to continue. We're going to make sure that we are set up with the right uh, Facebook page. I have so many Facebook pages. We're going to continue. <laughs> this, is the, this is where you're going to find the custom field. So now Zapier is talking to your ManyChat account, looking for all the custom fields you set up. See, do you look at, this is the one we just set up, favorite pet. So you want to make sure that you're picking the right one to update. So here we are. We're going to make sure that we have the email. We're going to continue. And it, the test is successful because I just updated an email address in ManyChat. So continue. Now, now that ManyChat knows what to do, we need to tell it, what app to send that information to. So again, when somebody, set, when somebody replies to that flows with their email address, where are you going to send that email address? So what I'd like to do is create a registrant in GoToWebinar. And all you have to do is uh, just add the action and make sure you select GoToWebinar and then create registrant. And what this is doing now is it's going to talk to GoToWebinar and it's going to send whatever information you give it. 
So luckily we get first name from Facebook. So this isn't even many chat specific. This is the first name of the subscriber from Facebook. You put your first name in, you put your last name in. Again, you get this from Facebook, okay? And then user custom field email goes over there, okay? So what happens now is when you press continue, you're telling Zapier, please, when you see an updated custom field called email in ManyChat, please zap that information over to go to webinar. We've confirmed that it's working. We're going to continue, and it's on. So this is the fun part because I'm going to give you guys And I think it is give you the link to this landing page. And I'm just going to make sure that this is set up correctly. I want this, uh, I want this to ask you for your email address. Yes. Okay. This is a, another cool part because this is actually where you ask people for their email address. For example, I created a quick landing page, like a fake webinar registration landing page in ManyChat. And if you click on the send a messenger button, it asks you which email I should send the webinar confirmation to. With, for this, you want to use the input block. And all that this does is the input block here, when you ask somebody a question, you can tell it you know, what, what you want to collect. In this case, I want to collect an email. And it will actually validate if that's an, an, e an email or not. So if you type to me at, or you didn't have me at some random thing.com, it's not going to accept it. It's going to look for valid email addresses. And then it'll shoot you an error if you don't uh, type the right thing in. Another thing that's really cool is you just map this right to the custom field. So when somebody types the answer, which should be their email address, you can just map it to that custom field we set up already. As soon as that happens and it's a successful input, Zapier sees it, and that's when it'll get zapped over to go to webinar. So I'm going to delete this because this is was just an example, and I'm going to make sure that this is published, and I'm going to give you a link to this landing page, and I'd love for you all to go through this and test it. So uh, let's go back to this one. Set up, copy to clipboard, and I'm going to drop this into chat. Is that all right? Yes, do this, please. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to find a way to do that. Chat. The chat should be at the very bottom. Yes, got it. Um, all panelists and attendees. Okay. So that's the, that's the landing page. Um, just click the send to messenger button and give it an email address that you can check right now. And it's, it'll probably take, it could take up to a minute for all this stuff to happen, and we can just keep talking through it. But yeah. what you should see is um, a messenger window open up, give it an email address when it, when it asks you for it, and then check that email address in 10, 15 seconds and see if you got uh, a, a webinar confirmation. That would be pretty cool if this actually works. <laughs> awesome. I'm doing it actually right now. <laughs> but this is awesome. I love how also you can, if you go back to the opt-in actions and you see the message, what you did was you, if you go to opt-in actions, yeah, sure. um, do the message. What you did was you, after the user input, you uh, enter the custom field back into the text saying, hey, check this email yep. for your confirmation. Exactly. And that email will show as like tam at bottomacademy.com. I'm like, well, how'd you, how'd you know that? Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, a really, email. that's a really cool feature that a lot of people don't realize we have is uh, we have these liquid tags that you can use. And if you just do a left curly cue bracket and do another one, See it, this is a little menu pop up. You can grab any variable. So, this is where you would find that. If you wanted to read an answer back to somebody that they just gave you, you can put any custom field right inside of your text. Yeah. Really like cool. you mentioned your favorite pet was a dog. Yeah, exactly. Here's a, here's a gift of a, a corgi or something. Exactly, something like that. So, Gabriel asked a question. Um, yes. He asked, why not ask for the email on the landing page? All right. This is this is for the this is a test because um, this is assuming you've got a conversation going with somebody already. Uh, yes. A lot of you are brand new to this and you're not subscribed to my random test page. So this was a way of me getting into getting you into a conversation today. Now, if you've got somebody already uh, on your list, for example, you've got a list of people who've indicated that they might be interested in a webinar. You can broadcast a message to them with that exact flow, and just say, "Hey, um, I've got a webinar coming up." Would you, would, are you interested in joining? Yes or no? They hit the yes button and you send them the, okay, cool. Which, should I, which email should I send a webinar confirmation to? Mm -hmm. So it's like, really, this is an awesome tool for remarketing. Like if you've got a list, if you're building a list inside of ManyChat and you want to find new ways to uh, get in front of people, 
webinars are a great way to do it. People are already doing it. You're basically just using ManyChat as a way of getting that conversation started so you can get, first of all, an email address from them and then get them to show up to a webinar. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, you're doing it within Messenger. So this is just like an example of like a landing page. Yeah. But in a real scenario, it'll be like a sequence or a broadcast. Exactly. Very, a seamless transition. People said um, they got the email. It works. Paco said it works. Lisa said it works. That's cool. Awesome. I like when stuff works. So do you guys see how this could be kind of exciting? Like you're asking somebody to take action in Messenger and it's remote controlling some other piece of software. That's kind of what Zapier, that's why Zapier is so cool because Zapier turns ManyChat into a marketing remote control for all of your different marketing softwares. So yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty neat. <laughs> awesome. My chat is acting up, but I see no some questions, Dan. If you see any questions that you um, think is important to answer, then we should definitely address it. Yeah. So uh, I, this is an interesting one. I have a few people who are not entering their emails first time Messenger sends them a message to subscribe. They're subscribing to the bot, but not email list. Okay. So think of Messenger as just uh, an interface through which you can have conversations with people. That's what it is. So um, they're not, they're not going to automatically get subscribed to an email list or something. You know, you have to ask, you have to give people a reason to do that. And messenger, like all you're, all you're doing is just automating, getting their name from ManyChat into your email marketing software or something with Zapier. Uh, imagine you're having a conversation with a person, uh, like if you're sitting across the table from somebody and, and you open a conversation with them, their email address isn't automatically going to sync with your CRM. Like you have to ask them for their email address and you have to give them a reason to give it to you. Messenger is just a way of having a conversation. So um, don't try not to think of it as some kind of magic thing that suddenly knows all this information about people. Uh, that's what I would say to that question. Awesome. We got a lot of questions coming in. Um, let's go with Ingrid. She says, do I know if I can, do I have to use my Zapier account or should I use the client's Zapier account? Um, it, you know, that's completely up to you and the way that you want to do like data management for your business. Uh, I think that there's no reason to have more than one Zapier account because if you have a pro account, you can basically just set up tons of zaps for people. And I think you can also put them into folders. So you could have a folder for one client and a folder for another client and be running zaps all from the same account. If you're the service provider and you need control over what's happening and you need to be able to jump in there and debug a zap that isn't working, definitely make sure it's in your account or that you have easy access to the account either way. Like just think of it from your own perspective and how you're going to be able to serve that client quickly if something goes wrong. That's how, yeah. that's what I would say. Awesome. I've noticed Dan also on your Zapier account, you had a bunch of different tests set up of yes. different use cases. Yes. Would you be open to, sh to sharing that screen again and seeing what kind of use cases we can do with Slack and other, other. Yes, yeah, certainly. So we just did a, a webinar registration, for example, and that was a successful test, which is really cool. Let's go jump over to uh, some other things that we can do here. So I'm going to go back to the Zapier dashboard here and then uh, let's turn this one off. Well, we can keep it on, I guess. No, I want to, I want to turn it off. So, cause I don't want to interfering with any of the other zaps I might want to test here. So let's see what might be cool. So I, um, I see Infusionsoft, I see Slack, I see yeah. MailChimp. Yeah. Let's Google do, Sheets. let's do MailChimp because again, this is just another example of how to get an email address from, from many chat via messenger into another platform. So if you're doing digital marketing. And if you, if you've been taking this seriously, like you probably are, are already doing email marketing. In fact, a lot of our best customers are people who are like career email marketers and Facebook ads buyers and different, different acquisition strategies. And what they're doing is that they're just building messenger into the communication stack. Messenger has better engagement. It, it, you know, people are clicking on this stuff. They're reading this stuff and, and email, it's kind of going the other direction less and less people are reading emails, less and less people are even opening emails. So uh, Messenger is an amazing tool for the digital marketers arsenal because it is where people's eyeballs are. And it does two things. It lets you follow up with people and it lets you collect information from people. So it's like rolling web forms and a follow-up mechanism like email into one tool, which is really cool. So mm -hmm. let's figure out how to, let's figure out if we can do something here with MailChimp. I think I have a demo set up in there so that it will send you a follow-up message or like a welcome message. Mm -hmm. uh, so imagine you are uh, any kind of digital product, you're doing some kind of digital product sales or really you're selling anything and you want, you want people who uh, get onto your list to get a welcome sequence via email. And that's pretty standard. Like 
any, you want to keep those touches going. You want to keep talking to people until they basically tell you to stop. So let's go to MailChimp and see what we have set up here. We have just a welcome message for people who join our messenger list. And I would recommend anybody get anything like this set up. Like it's good. It's good to touch people from <laughs> that's going to sound terrible. It's good to have, it's good to have multiple touches. <laughs> to communicate. Yeah. To communicate via mul multiple channels. Okay. So, uh, I have this simple welcome message set up and let's just see how I set this up. Let's go jump in here. And, uh, bop, 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 bop. yeah. Okay, cool. So the same thing, new updated custom field. Somebody puts their email address in. And then what you can do is you can update a subscriber in MailChimp. So this is cool. You add that new subscriber. And by the way, you can also update an existing subscriber with MailChimp in Zapier as well. So mm -hmm. if you already have a list and you're promoting, you're cross promoting things between email and messenger, you can kind of keep both of those tools synced using this find a subscriber, which is pretty cool. So we're going to continue just to make sure everything's working. Yeah, everything should be working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a ref URL widget. That's what I'll do. I'll send you a ref URL. And if you click on that, it's going to ask you for your email address. And you should get a follow-up message from my MailChimp account. So if you want to test this again, if you want to see, uh, yeah, this is perfect. Let's do this. Set up. Yeah. Nice. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to type this to everybody. Um, please give this a shot. And if you click on that, that's a ref URL. That's going to open a messenger conversation. It's kind of a special kind of URL. It opens messenger and it opens a specific conversation. Type in your email address there. You should get a follow-up email in, uh, from MailChimp to that email address. And while you're, while you're doing that, I want to show you something that's kind of cool about Zapier. Zapier figured out really early on that people are always trying to figure out if their zaps are working. And there was really no easy way to figure that out early on. When you're doing software that's pr teaching people how to do an outcome of some kind, you have to build tooling in that's going to show people if it worked or not. That's what analytics are. That's what stats are. So let's go look at task history. And what you can do is you can actually look at all of the zaps that are firing right now historically, and you can test to see if it's working. So as of right now, we have a bunch of people testing this, which is really cool. And you can see it real time as it's happening. You can also filter by zap to see if it's working and um, who it just sent to. So let's just go look at the most recent one. Uh, yeah, so this is cool. Let's, let's look at the data out. So Carrie just filled out this form and we know that by looking at the task history. So that's yeah. just a little thing for you, just a little like hack for you guys. If you are worried that stuff's not working, go straight to task history and see what's going on in there. Mm. This is all super, super, super useful. Oh, good. Even like the nuances, like the task history. Right. <laughs> yeah, a lot of this stuff you wouldn't know unless you just went in there and fiddled with it a lot. Okay. So everybody satisfied? Did, did, who got a welcome message? Anyone get the email yet? I didn't get it yet. I think I'm still waiting. Yeah, it might take a minute. Awesome. Well, as – oh, so jo, Joan got it. Nice. W. Nice. Yeah. Yet. Um, cool. Got nice. in my spam box, just yeah. came in. Okay. Spam or promotions? Ingrid, Juan, nice. Awesome. So, yeah, again, this is just a proof of concept to show you that you can trigger events in other applications by using conversational actions in Messenger. Like, mm -hmm. just try to wrap your head around that because you're not asking people to do anything like click a button or, like, go to a landing page. Like, you can get information from somebody, and just by them saying something to you, you can initiate automations. Like, that's mind-boggling yeah awesome i know there's a lot of questions in the chat and also in the q a but i do want to make sure that you got everything that you wanted to share dan um, yeah. is there anything else that we that we should be listening to or missing or should we just go straight into q a yeah so um let me just show you like uh, let me see if i can share this so i have the zapier test channel set up in slack can you guys see my slack screen yes okay hopefully it's the right channel because this is the literal actual mini chat slack so Zapier test. Um, this channel is really just to, just to test different webhooks and different things that we're trying here at ManyChat. But I wanted to show you these last two zaps that I fired this morning before I got on with Tam just to test because what you can do if, you're, if you are in inside sales, um, if you're a sales development rep or you're an AE or you're doing any kind of, if you're a part of the sales process and you're having conversations with people in Messenger, you can trigger automations based on stuff that they say. And if they say the right stuff, 
you can tell Zapier to shoot you a message, a direct message in Slack. A lot of people have Slack open all the time and they might not have Messenger open all the time. So uh, the thing is that if, especially for busy people, they, they turn their Messenger like notifications off. But I know a lot of salespeople who keep their Slack notifications on. Those are the only notifications they actually have on their phones. Their phones don't even ring. So if you want to reach a salesperson, you say the right thing <laughs> in Messenger, you can get pinged in Slack, which is really cool. You can do this via Zapier. And you can push any custom field data into Slack as well. So see how I, I shot somebody's first and last name and the email address that they gave me. And then it told me which webinar that they signed up for. Like you can push all of that information into a quick snippet into Slack and tell it what, um, what like just, just some basic information about who this person is. And it's a great way to weed out conversations that don't matter and just use Slack as a way of having only the best conversations. So you're getting that ping in Slack, jump in a messenger or email them and uh, continue the conversation. So for Got inside it. sales teams, this is a really great tool. So Dan, say I'm a salesperson. Uh, yeah. working for a company and I'm assuming when someone, uh, how do I get notified? Is it when the action on many chat is, is, is triggered when it says notify admin? No, so you, so, so, so you can do that. What I'm asking, what I'm showing you here is what you can do with Zapier to be more nuanced. So maybe somebody, maybe a sales rep doesn't want to get a, a messenger notification because that's where they talk to their wife. You know, they don't want to, they don't want to get constant notifications when leads are showing up at four o'clock in the morning. What sure. they can do, is they can set up a zap that triggers only when a custom field is updated, for oh, example. I see. Or when somebody- like a webinar or a MailChimp. Ex exactly. Or mm. somebody says, I'm a decision maker at this company. Or you can flag certain company names to trigger. You could actually trigger all of this based on a keyword in mini chat. So if somebody writes to you from Coca-Cola, hey, I'm from, I represent Coca-Cola, you, you can shoot a zap straight into Slack and say, hey, somebody from Coca-Cola wants to talk to you. You should probably get back in touch with them that kind of a thing. It's a way of filtering the most important messages using these abstractions like Zapier and messenger conversations. Got it. Yeah. Very cool. Qualifying leads. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So one more thing I want to tell you is possible. And this is really cool because this was an update that we pushed like two weeks ago to the Zapier integration is the ability to search for email addresses inside of ManyChat. So we've been talking about how to get data from ManyChat to other uh, tools. Well, now with this new version of the Zapier integration, you can actually trigger automations in ManyChat based on actions that people take externally. So imagine that you're a Shopify user and you are selling products in there and you're messaging people in ManyChat a certain way if they haven't bought from you. But the moment that they become a customer, you don't wanna keep sending them the same drip content. So imagine being able to trigger a tag change in ManyChat when somebody buys something from you that says, anybody who has this tag, stop sending automation messages. Well, you can now do that with uh, the new version of Zapier, which just came out like last week or a couple weeks ago. I don't remember. And you can do that by searching for email. So as long as their email matches, so whatever email they use to buy the product in Shopify, if that email matches an email in ManyChat, you can add a tag to their user that says, don't send anymore and you can filter those people out in broadcasts and mm. subscriptions. So from a marketing automation standpoint, this new way of being able to sync subscriber data from, from tool to tool using the email as the universal identifier, that's all now possible with ManyChat. And there's some people who are already setting up some really sophisticated stuff. Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was testing that this morning with our Stripe account. So you can actually, you can grab your secret key from Stripe and you can, for every new customer that gets created, you can try to see if they are a ManyChat subscriber and then you can just tag them on the fly and exclude those people from broadcast promoting a sale or whatever you want to do. So really from a marketing automation standpoint, all that you're doing, the end goal of marketing automation is to say the right thing to the right people at scale. That's all that you're doing with marketing automation. So this is just another tool that helps you say the right thing to the right people or avoid saying the wrong thing to people who don't want to hear from you anymore because they already gave you their money. Got it. Awesome. All right. Want to go into questions? Sure. Yeah. Uh, 